all new builders welcome back to city skylines and i have a question for you guys have you guys ever been building your city looking similar to this and you get so far probably about 20 30 thousand pop in your city and next thing you know you start building your traffic up and like you're like ah why is my traffic so congested i didn't start off with so much traffic but now i'm I'm shut down. I can't do anything. So let me start a new city. And then you go into the new city and you start doing the same structure again. And it just keeps failing on you, right? So that's what I want to talk to you guys about today. Let's talk about what we can do in these situations to prevent gridlock from happening. And we're still going to use a grid format to be able to accomplish this. We're just going to structure a little bit different. So pay attention to this. This is pretty common, especially for beginners to do, which is there's nothing wrong with it for smaller cities. But as you continue to grow, it's going to compound your traffic problems. So let's take a look at what we can do a little different to fix some of these issues. So as you continue to build your city, the first thing you want to start with is a diamond interchange. So diamond interchange works really well for this particular example. There's different different ways you can do this. But for what I'm showing you right now, um, beginner guide, you can use this diamond interchange right here. Something very simple, very easy to build to get you guys where you need to go. Then you're going to do one-way one, one way roads. And these are going to be act as your artery roads. These are going to be the roads that people use to get from your expressways to your collectors and then to your local roads, which we're going to talk about here in just a minute. So one way roads, and then you're going to leave space in the middle. And I'm going to show you what for here in just a second. So artery roads go down in your center right here and these go both ways. So if you're building a massive city, your artery roads are going to go down here. And they're going to go down here and it's going to be a straight shot either direction so you may have industry here that's feeding down into here and using these arteries to get to and fro industry over here that's using these arteries to get to and fro so expressway right here this could connect down here this artery right here can connect down here and bring you downtown so downtown if you put downtown here this is going to bring you your traffic flow throughout your city and it's going to help mitigate that traffic flow a lot, lot different than this your arteries you want to have minimal points of contact these right here are pedestrian roads they don't impact your traffic flow because they're not stopping your traffic the only things that stopping your traffic is these collectors right here so there's two collectors and another artery connection right here so minimal contact down through here um i'll put a roundabout in here to feed into these because i typically put higher density in here so either residential offices or higher density higher density commercial in here and um, that's why I have a tram line that runs through the center that feeds into these and they can use this tram line to get from one end of the city to the other or to get to another connection point like this metro line that runs right here or a bus line that runs up and down through these these areas right here. After you build your your artery network in and you start building that structure then you're going to go in and start building what's called your collectors these are the roads that connect into your local roads so the difference over here is we have a collector coming from the interstate interstate to a collector and then all your local roads are connected in the collector but there's no artery to bring anything down through here so if you have commercial over here say you have a dense area of commercial right here in order for the trucks to get from the industry to that commercial stop 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 before they ever even get there now your commercial zones don't have enough resources or your industry doesn't have enough buyers because all their trucks are lined up in here in this traffic so that's why you want to make sure you build your arteries to mitigate that and get those trucks around your city faster so they can serve those commercial zones that may be right here over here and it can get to them faster and then get the trucks back to the the industry zone so they can do their next shipment and that'll help you with your um not enough resources in your commercial zones all right so that's how your collectors work so they go to artery and then they go to collectors and your collectors serve your your local zones in here there's two ways you can do collectors. You can treat them similar to your arteries. So you don't want to build anything on your arteries direct or directly. I leave five spaces here typically, and I'll put a fence along here and only use the local roads for whatever I put in here. 
And the reason why I do that is if you have anything built on these arteries, it's going to create another point for entrance and exit. So that's going to slow your traffic down. You don't want to do that. You don't want to slow your traffic down on your arteries at all if you can avoid it altogether. You, you see, I have these on here. I'm going to talk about these in just a moment. So, but you, you want to avoid putting any extra traffic onto your arteries because that's going to congest you very, very quickly. So you got your arteries that feed into your collectors and then you could collectors, you can do, depending on how long your collectors are and what you're using your collectors for, you can, you can do the same thing. You could put a fence here and just butt up a local road up to it, which if you're watching my build guide, you'll see me do that in my build guide in some of the instances. Um, but you can also do it like I have here to where you can actually build on both sides of this and actually have residential or commercial in here um, because these roads don't typically get as busy with a lot of different um, citizens using them. They can, depending on how you structure them. So you want to be careful on what you actually put on there and what you allow. Um, a lot of times I'll put parks and stuff on here or service buildings like a hospital or something like that that doesn't require a lot of traffic. Um, and then your local roads serve in here and they just serve all your residential and commercial and they just get people from point A to point B. But you see, there's a lot more contact points in here, but the roads aren't as busy or congested. So you won't have as much traffic buildup. So collectors, I don't have a connection here because this is going to create another red light right here and a red light here and a red light here. So a lot of more red lights. This is a, another walk path. And then this is a a road right here i don't have a connection here because remember we want to have minimal contact on here as well so traffic flows so if you have if you have a line here a line here a line here a line here stop go stop go stop go stop go stop go and it just compounds over the amount of time and then you end up with this again stop go stop go stop go stop go this you want to avoid this if you can so minimal points of contact. So even if I did come down here, I, I still wouldn't add another street in here. I'd actually take this underground into a tunnel and go on the other side of this trumpet and come out and then come down here and serve another artery that's down here. And um, it'll act like a uh, collector for the entire thing, but people won't treat it like a artery because they have the main arteries right here and these are typically faster. So they'll go to those. They may use the collector to get here to go over to this artery and take this down. Um, sometimes they'll use the collectors to go all the way down, but um, they usually use the the faster the faster routes or the faster faster methods to get there. So um, as you see, I have quite a few different forms of mass transit. So I have the tram going this way. And then I have a metro going this way. I would put another metro either on this side or on this side that feeds down and then um it would also feed down into the industry and it would also feed up into here into downtown so people could get from point a to point b quicker um bus networks so i have a bus network that runs this way and then it comes around and runs back up this way and it creates a circle and i'd have that go both ways and then same thing here so i would build a bus network that goes here see i have it going over the interstate and it would keep going down here and then circle back around and come back you know, it would act like a loop right here. Um, I usually, and especially in the city, I like to build a university right here. So this bus network serves people to get to and from the university from this part of town. And I would do the same thing on this side. And I would do another one, another section right here. And then the downtown area would have its own little bus network system that connects to the other um, services that are in the, in the, the area. So I hope you guys find this helpful and useful on really building up your road networks to lead into you being able to um, grow a huge 300k pop city without having a lot of traffic issues in your city. And this right here, this structure works very well for me on building huge cities and not having to worry so much about traffic. So if you find this video helpful and useful, hit that like and subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos like this. And I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you all next time. Thank you for watching.